this just in, if you happen to have um, bird flu, then you need to get some treatment. <laughs> Good stuff. Now let's move on to some history. The war for North Africa and Europe. That's what we got uh, ahead of us today. Uh, concepts, why was the Battle of the Atlantic considered important to Hitler? And be able to explain the importance of Battle of Barbarossa and Stalingrad. The key vocab for today is an individual named Dwight D. Eisenhower, uh, who ends up becoming a president of the United States. So you might know the name, but we first know him as a general in the military. The last time we spoke about uh, the war in Europe, we were discussing Hitler and taking over the western part of Europe. France, he totally took over so quick. And then he's bombing Britain in the Battle of Britain. And then in 1941, the bombing stops and Hitler turns his attention to the east. Hitler did not want to fight a two-front war, and at this point in time, he thought he had solidified the West. And he thought that with good reason. The West appeared done. What he does then is he opens up the he opens up Operation Barbarossa, which is the advancement of the Nazis into the Soviet Union. He goes back, Hitler goes back on his pact with Stalin. Okay? He the pact that he goes back on is the non-aggression pact that he signed in 1939, which split Poland. He goes back on that pact and then invades the Soviet Union, which totally surprises and catches um, Stalin off guard. And with how fast Blitzkrieg and the German army moves, uh, he advances very quickly uh, pretty deep into the western portion of the Soviet Union. Um, and this is Operation Barbarossa. And you can, you can see a visual of that on the right side of your screen. While Hitler is advancing into, Soviet, into the Soviet Union uh, throughout 1941, uh, the United States uh, has just been attacked at the end of 1941 and has now joined the war efforts. And almost by default, because the United States has joined the Allies, and because their main ally is going to be Great Britain, uh, the United States' first uh, stage of combat uh, is going to be in the Atlantic Ocean in the Battle of the Atlantic. And the Battle of the Atlantic is about transportation of goods to Europe. Uh, America needs to get into the, uh, the, the realm of fighting, which is Europe. And in order to do that, in order to get to Great Britain, they need to cross the Atlantic Ocean. Hitler knows how important or how crucial it would be to be able to stop America from shipping goods, men, tanks, aircraft, etc. How important it would be to stop this from happening before America even gets to Europe, okay? and he goes on the offensive, and he dominates the Battle of the Atlantic from 1942 to about mid-1943. However, by mid-1943, the Allied powers are going to turn it around. The, um, the ships are now moving in convoy systems, where we've heard that term before from World War I, where the ships move... Uh, in uh, move together in larger groups for protection. Uh, they're using sonar and uh, planes to detect subs below and above water. And it drastically improves things and essentially wins the Battle of the Atlantic, even though the Battle of the Atlantic is ongoing for uh, a, a, another year or so. Now let's turn, turn our attention back to Eastern Europe and the Soviet Union. Um, Operation Barbarossa, or this advance into uh, so the Soviet Union, continues into 1942, and after winter passes, that's when Hitler starts up his blitzkrieg attacks once more. And Hitler has his eyes set on a city called Stalingrad. 
Stalingrad is named after the Soviet Union dictator Joseph Stalin. The reason why Hitler wants it is because of the oil fields that are located there. It's an industrial city which he's more than willing to destroy, but Hitler wants those oil fields. So in 1942, they attack the city, and the Germans essentially have nine-tenths of the city occupied and taken over. They just haven't fully done it. They get that far when winter comes, and of course, it is cold. So the advance by the Germans comes to a halt, and the Soviets at this time use the delay that winter provides for them to bring in large reinforcements. And they end up surrounding the city, cutting supplies to the German troops in the city off entirely. And the Germans in the city, the Nazis in the city, they have nothing to do but sit and wait and be cold. And they finally surrender. Even though there are over one million Soviets that lose their lives in the Battle of Stalingrad, there are this is a huge victory for the Soviet Union. Uh, it's the first time the Nazis have been turned back and it's a turning point because from here on out the Nazis are, are slowly but surely going to be pushed back to the West, meaning the Soviets are making their way to, uh, are, are, are beginning to take an offensive stance instead of a defensive stance. Now this map here is a good visual for showing you the German advance into the Soviet Union. And the only thing I'm going to point out beyond this is we get um, the Germans advance so far and then you see where Stalingrad is in the map, on the map. And that's about how far the Germans get before the Soviet Union begins to push back the Nazis. And that's finishing up the Battle of Stalingrad. Now we're going to turn our attention to North Africa and Italy. And if you take a look at the map on the screen here, um, the Allied powers, Britain and, and America specifically, they decide that the first place they're going to attack is, is in the south, gaining control of the Mediterranean Sea, sea and then heading up to uh, Italy. And that's what they do. The Axis powers, they have control of North Africa. This is called Operation Torch, happening in 1942, 1943, um, I should say. And they invade North Africa, remove the Axis powers from having control there. And then they move into Sicily, just south of Italy, you see there. And that move right there, when they take over Sicily, uh, that throws Benito Mussolini out of power. Here's the dictator of Italy for over 20 years, and in 1943, he's out of power. With that said, the Germans still have control of Italy. They are running the show in Italy um, as far as the fighting is concerned. And they fight for approximately another two years before, they, um, before Italy finally falls um, and is done for World War II. Now, that's all we're going to focus on today. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more about the war in Europe next time.